Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your photography really stand out. So I'll show you how I took this bland and flat image and turned it into this gorgeous photo that really pops. First things first, I need to show you how I took this image. So let's fire up the mini. Yeah, that might have been a little bit dramatic for a mini. But anyway, after driving the car to a location I really liked, as well as finding a composition that really suited the car, you'll notice that my exposure line has three separate dots on it. So the reason there's three dots on my exposure line is because we're taking three separate images at three different exposures. So to do this yourself, you're gonna to wanna to go to your exposure line and turn your shutter wheel. This will allow you to adjust how big of a gap you want between each of your exposures. All right, so once you've taken your three images and you're happy with them, you're gonna to wanna to import them into Lightroom. And once you've done that, you'll be able to see your neutral exposed image, your underexposed, and you're overexposed. Now, of course, we don't want three separate images. We wanna combine them all together to make one. So all we have to do is make sure that they're all selected, right click on one of the images, photo merge and HDR merge. Lightroom is just gonna take care of everything itself. And once it's done it, you can see all the images have been applied and just click merge. And that's what creates the HDR image, but we are nowhere near done yet. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around for the last step of this tutorial because it really is the cherry on top. So anyway, what we're gonna to wanna to do from here is make some basic adjustments until we're happy. All right, so that's everything we need to do in Lightroom. If we do a quick before and after of one of the original images compared to what we currently have, you can see a major difference already, but we're not done yet. We need to go and click on the image, right click that is, and then we need to go up to edit in Photoshop. So the reason we're in Photoshop is you might not notice it, but there's actually a lot of distractions in this image. To give you an example, we've got this very distracting red circle sign here. Um, the ground is actually littered with these white blobs that I just really don't like, as well as in front of the car, there's some leaves and foliage that I just want to get rid of all this kind of stuff. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. All right, just for reference, all I'm really doing here is using the spot healing brush tool. Grab your circle, make it the correct size hover over something you don't want, click and it's gone. It's, it's genuinely that simple. Now what's gonna be a little bit harder than just clicking away the distractions is this sign back here. So the way I'm gonna do this is by using the clone stamp tool. So first of all, we're gonna to wanna to select our size, hold down alt of where we want to take from the image and then click and simply brush over the sign. So that got rid of the sign, but it still looks a little bit fake. So all I'm gonna do to cover it up is extend our tree. Using the exact same technique, I'm just gonna select the tree and literally color in brand new leaves that weren't there before. And now suddenly when we zoom back out, you would, uh, you'd never know that there was a red sign to begin with. Now we're moving on to the last step of the tutorial. Like I said earlier, this is the cherry on top, the thing that's gonna really make this image stand out to the viewer. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first of all is just get your image exported as a PNG and save it anywhere on your computer. So you might be surprised to see that we're now on my phone. And the reason that we're on my phone is because we're gonna be using an app called Lens Distortion. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to put your image onto your phone. I personally use Dropbox. Now, go onto Lens Distortion and begin a new project. And this is where we're gonna add our final tweaks. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is navigate to light hits and then all the way across to soft light. Now, when you select the first option, we're gonna simply drag the light hit down until it's where the sun was at in our image. So I think right there is perfect. Now we're not done with this light hit because the color of the glare that's coming into the lens 
isn't the color you'd expect because it's white, but you can see in the background our sun and the sunset is quite golden. So we're just going to tap it into the filter itself and then we're going to go all the way to the right and change the temperature. And of course, we're going to make this more a much more golden color. Now you'll see that the gold color we've changed it to is the perfect temperature that matches our sunset in the background. Then we're going to add on a new layer by clicking the plus button at the very bottom of the screen. And this time we're going to be coming over to color and I'm going to be navigating over to matte bronze and just selecting this filter here because uh, I think that goes brilliantly with the image and you can even control the intensity of the filter. I'm going to bring it to about 75% of the way across. Now the very, very last step that I'm going to do is going to be extremely subtle. You'll hardly be able to see a difference, but it's really going to help frame the image. So we're going to add on one more layer and we're going to come right across to nature and fog too. So selecting the second fog sequence, we're going to go in, we're going to edit it and we're going to edit the blur so that it becomes a lot more see through. We're going to slightly decrease the opacity. And what we're going to do here is make it really, really large and then bring it down to the bottom of the screen so that only a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the fog is coming up, which is just helping naturally frame the photos. So if we hold down the screen, we can see the before and after of our edits. So here's the before and there's the after. You can really see the difference that it makes. You know, without the sun glare, it seems a lot more bland. And without the fog at the bottom of the screen, there isn't as much framing towards the image. So now we've gone from this to this. And there you have it. That's how we turn a bland image that no one would even notice into an image that I would personally love to print large and get framed. So if you enjoyed today's video and you found it useful, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe for future videos. And of course, in the meantime, you can check out more videos here. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.